So there's this question going around about what happens to the intrinsic carrier concentration in a semiconductor when you dope it. Does it change? Does the minority carrier concentration change? The intrinsic carrier concentration does not change. The minority carrier concentration does change and it goes down when you dope a semiconductor. And it all has to do with thermal equilibrium. So we'll need to talk about what thermal equilibrium is. And the equation right here is the statement of thermal equilibrium. The intrinsic carrier concentration is the square root of the majority and minority carrier concentrations. For silicon, n sub i is about 10 to the 10th per cubic centimeter. Thermal equilibrium implies that n sub i stays a constant at all time. And as you change doping levels, it doesn't change. To get this, let's look at a prototypical semiconductor, a very simple semiconductor that has only two carriers in it. We'll keep ourselves at room temperature, meaning that the semiconductor is a piece of stuff sitting on a table someplace in a room that is at oh, about 22 degrees Celsius. Because of the thermal energy that is in the solid of the semiconductor, holes can be created by electrons being excited into the conduction band. Let's say we have four of them in our prototypical semiconductor. Each electron can stay up in the conduction band just for a short time called the recombination time, tau sub r, which is usually a, a nice small number. But in our prototypical semiconductor, we're going to use really round numbers to get the point across. We're going to use recombination time of one second. Okay, totally unrealistic, but it's what we're going to use. Only having four electrons in the conduction band is totally unrealistic, but this keeps it simple. And I'm also going to say that the, the volume of the semiconductor here is one cubic centimeter. Every second, each electron has to go back home. Each electron can stay up for one second, meaning if there are four electrons up here, every quarter of a second, I'm going to see an electron go back down to a, rejoin a hole. And then they annihilate. There's, there's nothing left. So what happens next? To maintain thermal equilibrium, another one comes up. Let's think about what happens when the very first electron is promoted to the conduction band. How does it get there? So you have an electron in the valence band and it has to go up to the conduction band. It gets there by having thermal energy given to it. Where does it get it? It borrows it from the solid in the, the form of a lattice vibration bumping into it, a phonon. So the electron borrows some thermal energy from the solid to get up to the conduction band. Now there's an electron in the conduction band. The solid has a little bit less thermal energy to it. The solid has gotten colder. But that's not good, right? It's, it's got an environment to, to keep up with. And so what does the solid do? It borrows a little bit of thermal energy from the environment to bring itself back up to temperature. Because every time the electron is promoted, the solid gets colder. And that's that's got to be fixed. And so a little bit of thermal energy goes into the semiconductor to keep it at room temperature. Well, every quarter of a second, one of these electrons goes back down to the valence band. The electron has to give up energy when it returns to the valence band. Only LEDs give that energy up in the form of light. Normally semiconductors give that energy up in the form of heat. A phonon in the semiconductor solid will absorb that thermal energy that equals the gap energy. So that means the solid now has a little bit more thermal energy in it and it's gotten hotter. And hotter is not something that's not going to, going to want to keep per the you know, zeroth law of thermodynamics. It's going to give up a little bit of that thermal energy to the environment. So a solid is constantly absorbing thermal energy equal to the gap energy and giving up thermal energy to the environment constantly. In this case, every quarter of a second, something gives. But it has to maintain thermal equilibrium. It has to maintain this condition, meaning for every electron that returns to the valence band, another one has to come back. And so another hole in the electron is created. So if every quarter of a second an electron goes back to the valence band, every quarter of a second an electron is promoted to the conduction band, leaving behind a hole. So that you maintain this thermal equilibrium statement. That's, that gets maintained. The, the four holes times the four electrons under a square root is the intrinsic carrier concentration. So in this particular case, the n sub i in the, our weird example is four. That's thermal equilibrium. Now you add dopants. Let's bring in four donor dopants. So they each kick in an electron. And so now we have eight electrons in the conduction band. All eight electrons still have to follow this rule that, that, that they get to get to stick around 
for one second. Except that if there aren't any holes left, then they stick around longer. <laughs> but as long as there are holes left, they, they stick around for one second. Meaning that not every quarter second, but every eighth of a second, a hole gets, gets annihilated. Because now there are eight electrons up here. So every eighth of a second, a hole gets annihilated. Still, every quarter of a second, an electron gets promoted and you, ha you get a hole back. But every eighth of a second, a hole gets annihilated. In thermal equilibrium, what that's going to translate into is twice as many electrons as, as there are holes. There are going to be fewer holes than there were before because eight times per second, you lose a hole and four times per second, you gain a hole. You're in equilibrium, you're going to have fewer holes. You won't have eight electrons up here in the conduction band because you're going to keep giving up electrons to, to destroy holes, right? So it costs you a few electrons. It does it does it cost it'll cost you two electrons to get rid of two holes. A thermal equilibrium does have a penalty on electrons, but you have a lot more of them, so you don't care so much about it. Uh, but you lose a lot of your minority carrier concentration. Now, in a real semiconductor, you won't have four dopants in a cubic centimeter semiconductor. You might have, say, ten to the fifteen per cubic centimeter. If that's the number of dopants that you have, that will be, with the 100% ionization assumption, very, 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 very close to the electron carrier concentration. The electron carrier concentration might be 1.00001 times 10 to the 15th, so that'll be it. And silicon at thermal equilibrium, in intrinsic silicon, intrinsic means no dopants, you have uh, 10 to the 10th holes per cubic centimeter and 10 to the 10th electrons per cubic centimeter with that backwards. Now you go and dope it, you, you end up with uh, uh, more electrons per cubic centimeter. But that product, n times p, has to always be 10 to the 20th. So if you end up putting 10 to the 15th dopants in there, you're going to have 10 to the 15th n uh, electrons per cubic centimeter. Minus a small amount, minus something on the order of 10 to the 10th. Because a bunch of, you know, electrons will cancel out the holes. How many holes get canceled out? Well, you're allowed to keep 10 to the 5th holes per cubic centimeter. Meaning if you started with 10 to the 10th holes, and you go to 10 to the 5th, that means you, for every 100,000 holes, you, you lose 99,999. You lose five orders of magnitude, right? And how do they get annihilated? By electrons going back home. So yeah, you lose electrons too, but losing 99,999 electrons out, out of 10 to the 15th is, is, a, is a total drop in the bucket. So you don't care. So the electron carrier concentration is really not affected by, by the, the, the thermal equilibrium condition, but maintaining the thermal equilibrium condition really drives down the whole concentration when you n-dope the semiconductor. And if you p-dope the semiconductor, it's the opposite case. So yes, uh, those go down. You always maintain this condition in thermal equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium is what you have when the semiconductor is sitting there on a table in an environment just sitting there. As soon as you uh, start passing current through the semiconductor, this does break down. And that's what we deal with as we get deeper into chapter two and then in, in the later chapters especially. We're not in thermal equilibrium and when we start talking about MOSFETs for sure. But for now, this is how we should understand things. If you add dopants, you do decrease the minority carrier concentration.